Mechanics. 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 My friend Justin A. Game just got back from video game conference I just made up 2014, and he asked me what a mechanic was. So I said, oh, I don't know, it's uh, any working part of a video game. Like in Super Mario Brothers, when players make Mario jump, a Goomba falls into a hole, or coins are put in a risky area. Those are all mechanics. Uh, Justin's not a smart guy, and the joke kind of went over his head. So, anyway, he went on to explain his opinion on that definition, and then proposed his own definition of mechanic. Mechanics are the player-initiated actions from controller inputs as designated by the game designers. These actions have effects on the game state in terms of variables and dynamics of the gameplay system. So this leaves out stuff like navigating a menu in turn-based combat, and, you know, we can debate whether or not the mock ball in Super Metroid should be a mechanic, but that's not really in the scope of this discussion. There is no, there's no mock ball in Space Harrier 2. So, like in Space Harrier 2, you've got two mechanics. There's flying, which moves you around the screen, and then there's shooting. You can tally the number of mechanics in Space Harrier 2 using two digits in binary. And I should also mention, a mechanic's properties describe the resulting effects of that mechanic. For the flying mechanic, you move so many pixels per frame in the direction designated by the D-pad. A combined horizontal and vertical input triggers two moving mechanics at once. So if you press up and left, you are using the upward flying mechanic and the leftward flying mechanic at the same time. For the shooting mechanic, Harrier spawns a shot with a fixed vector, always the same speed, and always the same direction, straight forward. You can't have more than five Harrier shots on screen at once. After five, shooting just doesn't work until one of the shots despawns. Justin also introduced me to four criteria for understanding a mechanic's role in a game. I got the sense that these weren't hard and fast rules, but rather some things he found useful for putting a mechanic in context. First, you got the criterion of individuality. Does the input yield the same action every time? Or can the input result in a variety of different actions? Or, as I understood it, how many different actions there are for an input. So like, for moving, it's pretty easy. During gameplay, the D-pad only controls moving. And it's the same way for shooting. The A, B, and C buttons only control shooting during gameplay. Up next, the criterion of intuitivity. Intuition. The criterion of intuitiveness. That's a measure of the degree to which input method matches the form of the game. Or, as I understood it, how closely the input method matches the presentation of the resulting mechanic. This means you also have to account for things like how mechanics work in a game world, since that's part of the presentation. Like, uh, does it make sense to walk in this context? Does it make sense that you can cancel this action into this mechanic? So on, and so forth. For the flying mechanic, the D-pad points in the direction that Harrier moves. So that makes sense, right? However, he can't move after he gets shot, or if he's tripping, and he'll only move within the bounds of the screen. I think those both make sense though, uh, since I can't do much with Harrier if he's outside of my TV screen, and you know, that would... would where would he be? Uh, and anyway, I don't expect him to move if he's shot down or off balance, so it makes sense I can't control him in that case. Get ready. For shooting, there's no way to vary its direction or speed, so there's no way to modify your input. Additionally, there is no feedback that tells you when you can shoot and when you can't. That is, nothing tells you that there are too many shots on screen. You just have to know that 5 is the max. On the other hand, it makes perfect sense that you can't shoot when Harrier is hit or tripping. Harrier falls backwards or loses his balance in these states. So the game's presentation pretty clearly indicates that he's not going to be able to fire a blaster in the, you know, that wouldn't be very safe. And then, 
The criterion of directness measures how the changes in your input are paralleled by the form of the mechanic. Or as I understood it, if you change how you perform input, how closely the presentation of the resulting mechanic mirrors that change. In flying, Harrier always moves at a fixed speed, and he will only move when the player is pressing the D-pad, so movement is always one-to-one -one with what the player is doing on the D-pad. If you change input, he's gonna respond instantly. That said, Harrier can't move when he's hit or tripping, and he can't move outside the screen borders. He'll ignore your input in those cases. Shooting is pretty much one-to-one -one with how you press the shoot button. Just press it and he fires a shot. Uh, there are instances where it's not one-to-one, -one, but I've already gone over them, like when you're tripping, or when you've gotten hit. Get ready. No matter how you perform the input though, it's always the same shot. And last, but not least, the criterion of dynamism measures how the game world responds to the action. According to the form of the game world and the mechanic, does the world react realistically? Or, as I understood it, this is how the game world responds to the mechanic. The world actually responds a lot when Harrier flies around. When Harrier flies, enemy shots, and certain enemies will track his position, so moving will influence enemy behavior. But it goes beyond that. When Harrier moves, the camera perspective shifts relative to Harrier's position in two ways. Horizontally, the vanishing point goes to the opposite edge of the screen. The vanishing point moves left if Harrier moves right. And it moves right if Harrier moves left. Vertically, the vanishing point goes to the same edge of the screen as Harrier. The horizon line moves up if Harrier moves up, and it moves down if Harrier moves down. As for shooting, Harrier shots themselves have an element of dynamism in that they bounce off of invincible enemies and boss segments, making a cling sound. Or, if a shot kills an enemy, it makes a sound followed by an explosion and a dust cloud that whizzes by along with the rest of the Get game ready. world. Bosses also utter a wet sound when they get damaged by a shot. Alright, that's it for mechanics. I had some trouble getting these mechanics together though without laying down some groundwork prior. This meant listing Harrier's various potential states and the classes of objects he could interact with. You can see my detailed notes here. I mean, there's the URL. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say like http colon slash slash dub dub.